what's happening. You change the future. And you change the past. What did you do? Want some help? You're, you are, you're... Yeah. I'm Batman. Barry, what are you doing? Our kids are going to want to see this. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. They dropped another new Flash trailer with different footage, so we'll break it all down. There's a whole bunch of super deep cut Easter eggs some of you may have spotted. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. There's a whole bunch of big stuff coming up. There's even more Super Bowl trailers that I'm still working on right now. That's how many there were. Probably one of the biggest things in this trailer is all the different Batman suits. Some of you probably spotted the Easter eggs in the different Batman suits of Michael Keaton. The whole idea is that when they go to Wayne Manor, it looks decrepit, run down. It seems like he hasn't actually been Batman for a while. Like he's been pretty dormant as Batman. He's got the super long hair. It just seems like he's let himself go, basically. He's meant to be in his 60s, so it's not quite Batman Beyond age. He was in his 80s during Batman Beyond. But he touches the bookcase and he's touching a picture of his parents, Thomas and Martha Wayne, and it opens the secret entrance to the back cave where you see all of his suits. Now they jump cut it so they just go straight to his suit so you don't actually see him walk down into his suit vault. But in the other trailer footage where you see them walking around in his back cave and you see everything all over the place, all the technology looks kind of run down and rusted like he hasn't been keeping it up over the years recently. But just starting with all of his suits here, the one in the center is the one that you see him actually wearing in the trailer. It's just meant to be his most advanced suit that he has so far. They didn't say how many years he's been dormant, like how many years since he's been running around as Batman. The way he looks, it seems like it's been more than a decade. For the most part, they're all meant to be based on his same design language from the 1989 Batman suit. That one is actually in the background on the right here. The one directly to the left of it is the one that he wore in Batman Returns, just slightly more armored. That was the whole joke of him using that suit in the movie because Selena Kyle was able to use her claws to penetrate his suit. On the far left here, super deep cut, this is meant to be a version of his very first suit, like his Batman Year One suit. And the Batman symbol is also different from the others if you couldn't tell. All the other Batman suits have the same symbol on it except for this one. This is meant to be the Adam West Batman symbol from the 1966 TV series. The pistols are also meant to be grappling hooks, not actual guns, according to the costume designer for the movie. He also said he designed the ears for this cowl based on the Golden Age original Batman cowl from the comics. So it's like Michael Keaton's version of Robert Pattinson's Batman Year 2 suit, a very lo-fi early prototype for what would become his 1989 Batman suit and other future suits. Speaking of which, for those of you that always wanted to see Batman in the movies where the blue and gray suit from the comics, the one right behind this is the blue and gray suit from the comics. Ben Affleck's Batman also wears his own version of that in present day earlier in the movie. It's just meant to be an updated version that's closer to the design language of his normal Batflex suits. But it's still very clearly the blue and gray suit from the comics. The next one on the back right is another huge deep cut for the Batman Returns movie. It's the underwater Batman suit that they sold as a toy, but he never wore in the actual movies. It was just one of the many, many toys that they sold as merchandise. Speaking of which, the last one on the far right isn't actually a desert suit, even though you see the goggles there. It's actually another one based on a toy they sold from the Batman Returns movie called the Arctic Armor Batsuit, and it was just for cold environments or cold-based villains like Mr. Freeze. Raise your hand if you spent all your money on all those Batman toys when those movies came out back in the day. Get those wonderful toys. They do pretty much the same thing for every Batman movie, but it was just special back in the day. There were so many toys. If you watch the behind the scenes features, they talk about all the merchandising they did for those movies. They made so much money on the toys for those first couple of Batman movies. Part of the reason for them doing such weird deep cuts, though, is to tell you what happened to Michael Keaton's Batman after the events of Batman Returns. They're saying that he went on to have more adventures, he used these bat suits during them, also more references to his Batman movies. I mean, there'll be many across Wayne Manor and during the movie just in general. Like we have his original Batmobile, we have the Batwing, there'll be a bunch of other classic Keaton stuff in the movie too. But the pictures on his bookcase when he's opening the Batcave secret entrance, the one he touches, like I said, is of his parents, Thomas and Martha Wayne, but the other two pictures, zoom and enhance, it's still a little blurry, but I believe these are meant to be Alfred and Michelle Pfeiffer's Selena Kyle Catwoman. 
I don't think she's in the movie. I'm not expecting a cameo or anything like that. I think she was busy in the Marvel Universe filming Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania as Janet Van Dyne, and she is amazing in that movie. Make sure you go see that this weekend. But I think they want to say that he eventually got together with Catwoman and they had a life together for at least a little while. I don't know that they had any children or if there'll be any references to that, like Helena Wayne, for instance. They actually did do a version of Helena Wayne during the Batgirl TV series in the early 2000s, and those characters actually had cameos during the DC TV Crisis on Infinite Earths, like Ezra Miller also had a cameo during that. The way they're explaining the convergence of timelines and the Flash jumping across timelines, they could also say that his cameo happened while he was doing that, or because of what he's doing during this movie. But you probably spot it in his childhood bedroom where he's talking to the younger version of himself who's meant to be about 10 years younger. The reason why is because of the Pacific Rim poster and I Am Legend posters in the background. Pacific Rim was released in March 2013 and the reason why they want to say that he's traveled 10 years into the past here is because what else happened during 2013? Pretty big deal in the history of the DCEU. It was the year that Zod came to Earth during the Man of Steel movie. It was when Man of Steel was released in real life too. That was meant to be the beginning of the DCEU. And the whole idea is that he's come into the past and he's changed something and he's caused this convergence of timelines so that everything goes all crazy. And that's how he creates a version of Flashpoint where he basically erases his original future and there are no Justice League characters from his original Earth anymore. And the idea is that Zod shows up like right after that, right on time, and there is no Justice League to stop him, no Superman, no Aquaman, No Wonder Woman, no Cyborg, no Green Lantern, only Batman, the two versions of The Flash, and Supergirl. There was a behind-the-scenes featurette that Warner Brothers specifically asked me to take down a couple weeks ago. I did a video about, and during that, the director actually said, we have a version of the Justice League in this movie, but they're not quite as experienced as the original Justice League, talking about the DCEU version. I think he was just referring to the two Flashes, Batman and Supergirl, forming like a proto-version of a Justice League in the movie. They did say there would be a bunch of other surprises in the marketing, but I'm not expecting any like super surprise characters during this particular part of the movie. Like no other special Justice League characters. There'll probably be references to them though. So what I think they're actually doing in the movie is that instead of just like a traditional multiverse type of movie like you would expect, they're actually combining the concept of the multiverse hyper time, which is a DC Comics thing from the Flash comics and the traditional Flashpoint story from the comics, where he tries to change the past and winds up messing up his own future. Hyper Time is a little bit different because that gets into the concept of a bunch of different timelines with different possibilities, which is closer to the way they treat timelines on the Loki series in the Marvel Universe. During my Loki videos, there were a bunch of questions about this, like what's the difference between an alternate universe and an alternate timeline? The way they're treating it in the Flash movie is that he does something in the Speed Force that causes a convergence of a bunch of different timelines, so it's kind of like an alternate version of Earth, but it's really the same Earth, and he winds up erasing his future. So it'd be like combining a bunch of different timelines, which is how Michael Keaton winds up on this Earth. And put your tinfoil hats on, because I think before James Gunn was hired, I believe their intention was to use this convergence of timelines, this big twist in the movie, to sort of soft reboot things at the end of the film and say that Michael Keaton would be the new Batman on this Earth and Supergirl as well. Because there was footage from the end of the movie where Barry's able to free his father from prison, he wins his court case. They kind of did a version of that on the Flash TV show at the beginning of season two where he gets his father out of prison. But it was meant to happen at the end of the Flash movie and it was a bit of a celebration like Batman rolls up in his custom Mercedes and it's Michael Keaton's Batman, but it's the main Justice League Earth. Obviously that's all changed now because James Gunn's doing completely different things over the next 10 years. I've already done a bunch of videos about that and all the announcements he made. We also have another look at the Dark Flash who's meant to be an evil future version of the younger version of Barry in the movie. The trailer footage they've released so far hasn't really given any clues as to why that winds up happening. You do see the main version of the Flash screaming no angrily in his childhood bedroom, and it sounds like he's screaming at the other version of himself, the younger version of himself. Early speculation is that they just wind up messing things up even worse while they're trying to fix things, and it just leads to this alternate future where this other Barry winds up turning evil. So it's them doing Dark Flash in the movie instead of doing just a traditional Reverse Flash. But this suit is actually meant to be material from the Kryptonian ship, from Zod's ship. I know that raises so many more questions than it answers, but I'm hoping that the marketing material just gives away some more clues about that. But I think part of the idea is that this other version of the Flash just can't get over the death of their mother the way that main Barry does, and that just drives him to become evil. 
Like that becomes his villain origin story instead of choosing the better path, like the path of the main version of the Flash. The official synopsis for the movie just reads, Worlds collide in the Flash when Barry uses his superpowers to travel back in time in order to change the events of the past to prevent his mother from dying. But when his attempt to save his mother inadvertently alters the future, Barry becomes trapped in a reality in which General Zod is returned, threatening annihilation, and there are no superheroes to turn to. That is, unless Barry can coax a very different Batman out of retirement and rescue and imprison Kryptonian, Supergirl, albeit not the one that he's looking for, like he's expecting to find Clark Kent Superman, but he finds Supergirl. Ultimately, to save the world that he is in and return to the future that he knows, the correct timeline, Barry's only hope is to race for his life, run Barry run, but will making the ultimate sacrifice be enough to reset the universe? When they say reset the universe, I think they're talking about fixing the convergence of all these different timelines as things start to fracture, like he starts to make things worse and worse and worse. As far as I know, all the stuff with Ben Affleck's Batman happens earlier in the movie before the first version of Flashpoint. I've already talked about him getting the Flash ring. It looks a little bit different from the one from the comics, but it is based on the comics. And Ben Affleck's Batman is the one who's supposed to give it to him. Like, here's an upgraded suit and a really cool Flash ring with nanotechnology. If Ray Fisher had actually been in the movie as Cyborg, like he was supposed to be a couple of years ago, he probably would have been the one to actually build the Flash ring, though, using his mother box technology. A lot of you have also asked about this younger Barry wearing yellow in reverse Flash references. Like I said, at some point during the movie, he fights the evil future version of this younger Barry, but it's more of like a Savitar twist on the character, like someone from an alternate future timeline where a bunch of different timelines are converging just because of the way the Flash is messing things up using his Speed Force powers. She's not in the trailer either, but the Kiersey Clemens Iris West from Zack Snyder's Justice League, the Snyder Cut, is also in the movie. I'm assuming earlier in the movie. If you haven't seen, James Gunn has been hyping this up as one of the greatest comic book movies that he's ever seen. So there actually is a solid chance that some of these characters, not everybody, but some of them, the ones that don't have criminal records, could come back in future movies. They are making the Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow movie. It's going to come out after the new Superman Legacy movie, but it sounds like it's actually going to be a different version of Supergirl. So if the Sasha Calais Supergirl comes back, it might be in some multiverse context. And I believe the way they're explaining Henry Cavill in the version of Flashpoint during this is that his pod was destroyed on its way to Earth. Like he died on his way to Earth, and that's why there is no Superman on Earth. But again, I believe they're using the twist where it's a bunch of elements from different timelines all being combined together on this one Earth. If you can believe it, the plot in the original Justice League Flashpoint was a little bit simpler, even though that was meant to be a huge, huge storyline. Reverse Flash is meant to be the person who killed Barry's mother, but I don't think that he's meant to be a big character during this movie. There might be a couple light references to him other than just like the yellow jacket that the younger Barry winds up wearing. Maybe if they figure out who their main Flash is going to be in the future, like will they recast and have someone else be Barry Allen or will they just bring in the Wally West Flash or do something else? Then they'll do reverse Flash in that second movie. Before the big James Gunn reboot, Henry Cavill and Gal Gadot film cameos as Superman and Wonder Woman for the movie like they literally already filmed the footage so it's sitting somewhere on a shelf. I believe Henry Cavill's Superman was going to appear to him while he was in the Speed Force and it was going to tease the coming future movie version of Crisis on Infinite Earths, but that was their 10-year plan before James Gunn came along, like they're meant to be building up to a movie version of Crisis on Infinite Earths. I don't know if they've replaced their cameo scenes with other characters or different twists or if they just outright removed them from the film and just made it shorter. If they're lucky, maybe they'll release those as deleted scenes in the future. But as far as I know, this is meant to be one of Ben Affleck's last movies as Batman. He did film a cameo scene for Aquaman 2, but then again, so did Michael Keaton's Batman. And there was a question as to which Batman was going to wind up in the movie. Like they filmed Ben Affleck's cameo because they were replacing the Michael Keaton cameo scene. Maybe they swapped Michael Keaton back in or maybe they removed both of them. But James Gunn did say that Ben Affleck was talking to them about coming back as a creative behind the camera, like they were talking to him about directing a movie. So it is always possible that Ben Affleck winds up directing the Batman Brave and the Bold movie. Let me know in the comments, though, if Ben Affleck directs one of the upcoming new James Gunn DC movies, which one do you want it to be? Everyone click here for that other Flash trailer with a bunch of different footage and click here for my Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania movie review. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.